Oh yeah, it's time to get excited. It's time to get very, very excited. My little heart is almost jumping out of its chest because I've just seen the new toys related to that new Thunderbird show called Thunderbirds Are Go. I'm a very keen collector of any toy related to the classic series, but I'm also keenly interested in this new series because it actually looks pretty awesome. During the late 1960s and all through the 1970s and 1980s, I was exposed to this television show that is the original Thunderbirds and it had a huge impact on my life. In fact, it actually directed the style of work that I ended up doing for my life and that was basically blowing up things for the film industry. That's how much of an impact this show had on me. My interest in all that stuff can be directly related back to the Thunderbirds TV show. In this video, I want to concentrate just on one of the new toys, that is the super-sized Thunderbird 2, which has a Thunderbird 4, and there are also two little minifigures with it as well. And I want to take a look at how well this toy is made, how robust it feels, and this toy will end up being given to my son, and I will just see how long it lasts with him, because I'm pretty sure he's the best toy tester in the house. These new Thunderbirds toys have only just arrived in the shops. I'm only seeing the big Thunderbird 2 and the smaller Thunderbird 2, Toys R Us in Sydney was telling me it's a week and a half away before they have the rest of the stock up. I really want to get the new Tracy Island and of course all the other Thunderbird craft. Okay, let's get into this review. I'm excited. Let's do it. Okay, before we get into unboxing this beautiful super-sized Thunderbird 2, which has of course Thunderbird 4 there, let's talk about some of the history that's gone on with these toys in the past. As history has already shown, these Thunderbirds toys sell hard and very fast. They are extremely popular. Anything like this which is mint in box pulls good money on eBay. It's an absolute guarantee and I can also show you that one as well. That one there would also pull some pretty good dough. And because I'm a fan, I'm a collector and I'm a bit crazy, this one here, the 40th anniversary Thunderbird 2, which has got some rather nice critters down there, would be worth a fair bit of money on eBay these days. Oh, this is a stunning set, it really was. Look at all the Thunderbirds mojo that was going on in this set. Quite amazing indeed. And there was also the beautiful super-sized Thunderbird 1, Thunderbird 3, and the very highly sought-after Tracy Island. And there are actually a couple of different variations on that one there. So it has me thinking very seriously. I know what happened with these toys here, which were based around the original series. They became highly sought-after, highly collectible. Will the same thing happen with the toys based around the reboot of Thunderbirds? Will that new style of Thunderbirds be as collectible and valuable in the future? As some of you may know, Thunderbirds had a misadventure via this film here. I couldn't stand the film. I couldn't stand the toys based around it. But will those toys end up becoming very collectible because basically the fandom uh, said no. Sometimes being a failure can be a great asset in value. Maybe one positive that came out of this very, very awkward film, I think it was from 2004, was it taught people who are going to deal with this brand, don't mess with a good known formula that works. Uh, one big problem with this film was it put the hood on Tracy Island, and as soon as I saw that, it was game over for me. Good night, sister. One thing I do like about the new series is they have not drifted too far away from the Thunderbirds mojo. Thunderbird 2 there looks very, very similar to Thunderbird 2 from the original series. So maybe... And just maybe this could be a very positive thing for the original series and also the new Thunderbird series as well. Well, the Thunderbird on screen there, that's the Matchbox Thunderbird from the re-released toys of the original series. It's a nice bright Thunderbird. It's a very organic shape. Uh, there was a vivid one as well. It's a darker green. I think this is closer to the real Thunderbird look in a sense of the color. It's not as flat as the Matchbox one. In a sense, this is a cooler one, and I also dressed one up there for a video that I can't discuss, but I'm really keen to see how good that Thunderbird 2 there is compared to my other classic Thunderbirds. Okay, that's the box artwork on the new super-sized Thunderbird 2, which has Thunderbird 4. It's going to suck adults in. It'll suck children in. Boy, was I excited to see that in the stores. This is what the back of the box looks like. There is a boy playing there with Thunderbird 2, and there's all sorts of info showing you the features of this toy. Well, that info there, ITV Studios is the copyright owners of the Thunderbird series, ITC International Group Limited, and it looks like it's a Vivid toy. Uh, I'm not familiar with Vivid toys, but I will be very shortly. And if you do buy this toy, uh, this box has got some very important information, and a lot of people are going to miss it. You know why? Because it's actually hidden underneath the bottom of the box. Let's take a look at this here. Well, what this is is the battery replacement instructions and also a very extensive explanation of where to put decals on this beautiful Thunderbird 2. 
Now what's scaring me here a little bit is the sheer number of decals needed to basically finish off this toy. You can look at decals two ways. Either they can be your enemy and you just ignore them, or you take the time and put them on correctly and it will really lift the look of this model. In fact, I dare say the decals will make this a completely awesome Thunderbird 2. For me, this is important to show you this supersized Thunderbird 2 with Thunderbird 4 cost me $69 in Australia, which has some of the highest toy pricing in the world. Please tell me the prices you're seeing of this larger Thunderbird 2. The smaller Thunderbird 2, curiously, was $25, and that's its full retail price in Australia. Coming in for the unboxing, uh, I think this new toy release of Thunderbirds is going to decouple the high prices that the eBayers were pulling for those other toys there. It's going to be quite interesting to see what goes on. Oh, there's part one of a box of something. Is that just air or something, something in there? Oh, it's the pod. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks beautiful, too. <laughs> I'll be crying on this one, I'm sure. Oh, I can feel the nose. Oh, my goodness me. Oh, that's scary. Uh, but let's take a look at the craft. Oh, my goodness me. Uh, this is a beautiful toy. Oh boy, oh boy. I got goosebumps! I got goosebumps! Thunderbird 2's pod looks awesome. The stackle sheet looks scary. Uh, the Thunderbird 2 craft looks completely amazing. There was one person in this box yet to join the party. Here he comes. Oh yeah! Thunderbird 4 and the little minifigures. Yay! Well, okay, uh, this Thunderbird 2, the way the legs deploy is by the wings here. It's very different to the other classic Thunderbird 2s up the back there. And what I'm finding is that this leg here isn't deploying properly. Now, I've been giving this a bit of a play to think, well, maybe things are a bit tight since being in the factory and the fact it was all in the box. I can't get this leg to be in the right position. I hope I'm being fair there. I don't want to be showing this toy to be, well, having a fault. The bad word fault, isn't it? I can't get this leg to deploy. Maybe I'm the unluckiest consumer in the world. Maybe this toy just needs a fair bit of play to get it to work properly, but I can't get that leg uh, to be forward in the way I like it to be. Well, there's that troublesome leg there, uh, not wanting to stay down straight. Well, I've actually just worked out how to fix that leg. That was a leg there that wasn't setting properly, um, and now it sets properly. What I did was, when it was down closed like this, I gave this a good reef in this direction and I think that's reset it back to where it should be probably being in that box all squeezed up didn't help and now it's working properly so now after a little bit of a tweak hopefully Thunderbird 2 will stand up nice and proud on nice straight legs well ladies and gentlemen boys and girls this toy is doing it for me it is spectacular looking mind you I'm a chronic Thunderbirds fan Oh yeah, all I've got to do now is do a bit of unbagging, a whole bunch of steckle work, and this toy is going to look like a million dollars. Ah, oh, stickers, decals, my son calls them steckles. You probably love them or you hate them. They go into that new Thunderbird 2 there. You're probably wondering, hey Leah, did the earlier Thunderbird 2s have sticker sheets? Well, they did, and this is what they look like. Actually, very different to the one we're about to put on the new Thunderbird. This was the bit that wrapped around the engines on the Vivid model. Uh, there's a cockpit detailing there. And really, you can actually get away with not putting those on. And I think you'll find that Thunderbird 2 there has no stickers on it at all. Mind you, it does make for a rather bland experience in the cockpit. And I can show you another Thunderbird 2 which is all dirtied up and dressed down from a very secret project of mine. I can't mention the video in this video or else people get ready. But it has got a dressed up cockpit in there and it looks absolutely stunning and there's that saying will clothes make the man well I'm pretty sure these stickers here will make that model well, I'd like to give you some tips about putting stickers on it's all about being prepared really okay we've already established the stickers are on the bottom of the box there that information is vital in this I'm going to use a lump of play-doh because I'm going to do Thunderbird 4 first and I'm actually basically going to stick Thunderbird 4 in like this because I'm going to put these stickers on the back of Thunderbird 4 on first, and I've identified them that there is sticker 1 and sticker 2 related to Thunderbird 4. Well, first up, come in and orientate the thing you're going to put a sticker on, being Thunderbird 4, into a good position. I've got my Play-Doh holding the craft there. Okay, this feels comfortable. I've got my tweezers. Let's get my sticker. Okay, I'm going to come and just bend up 
beside the sticker there, it'll free the edge. Hopefully my tweezers will come in and pick that sticker off. Okay, I'll come up with my sticker. Uh, it's very hard down through camera. Coming in for a position, try to get it as square as I can. Ooh, how does that look? Ooh, there ish. Give it a bit of a tap. Release the tweezers, I think. That's okay, I can sort of just squeeze it around a bit. The tweezers is not full on yet. Okay, I think that's okay. And it looks right, just come in and finish it off with your finger. And as boring as it is, it's a case of going over this process many, many times by the looks of it. Okay, I've done the steckles on Thunderbird 4. Uh, it was all those there, which I think is like a glass bottom to this craft. Gordon Tracy is the one who pilots this one. A little bit strange because you know things like this were done for you the red and the windows up here yet that there and this detailing here were stickers and that is I think an area where you can rescue people and throw them in the back there there's also these very very uh, well I call them rescue boards or something but to me they look like the shape of a coffin so <laughs> maybe they got dual purpose there's one on the other side as well uh, that's sort of all new and funky with uh, the new style of Thunderbird 4 uh, but I think when you look at Thunderbird 4 as a craft, being the newer version of it, I think it has suffered the least and looks the best out of the uh, the new design. It really does. One big difference they've done is they've got rid of the battering ram and the light at the front. And if I bring in uh, another classic toy from the uh, based on the original series, there is that piece there. And of course, well, it had guns at the front too because, hey, it was all about shooting stuff up, wasn't it? Um... Yeah, light, battering ram, uh, something to raise up to shoot guns. Uh, that's what that thing de there did. Uh, and that possibly uh, removing that really makes uh, the Thunderbird 4 in the new series of Thunderbirds look very slick. But it's just got a lovely shape to it. I mean, whoever's gone and redesigned these craft have not drifted away from the coolness and beauty of these Thunderbirds vehicles. This Thunderbird 4 has a cockpit area you can open up and you can slide in Gordon Tracer. I hope it's Gordon, I'm sliding in there. But we'll talk about those little minifigures later in the video. Well, I can tell you one thing for certain, this Thunderbird 4 is far, far better than the Thunderbird 4 that had in that film from a couple of years back with those kids in it. That was a horror box, that thing. But hey, you tell me what you think. Maybe there's some aspects to this that you don't like. Maybe you don't like those windows there. Maybe you don't like the fact that it's only got three wheels underneath. You tell me. Maybe I'm seeing it all wrong because I'm a complete fanboy. But maybe it's also time now to move on to the big green beast lurking in the background and get steckles onto that one. The sticker sheets are very well laid out. They're actually good, good quality stickers. They come off nicely. It's divided into the Thunderbird 2 interior. Then there's the exterior ones here. There's the pod stickers here. And of course, I've already done Thunderbird 4. When I have really small stickers like this, I like to use a scalpel to uh, get it off the sticker sheet. Find the spot, making sure I've got the right sticker. I like the scalpel because you get a lot of control and I can come in with like a jeweler's screwdriver and just tap the bottom here. Hopefully get in the right spot and pull the scalpel away. That looks good and come with my big finger and just press it down nice and firm. And I can tell you all the stickerization is going to take time and I'm going to take my time doing this because if I do this nicely, it's going to make the model really, really shine. Now hopefully that one is also in the right spot. So take your time doing the stickers, do them right and you'll be rewarded really nice in here. Look at these little thrust levers that move there. Oh yeah. Well, I'm getting there. Uh, one thing, this is definitely daddy work. I couldn't see a child pulling this sort of... Uh, sticker work off there's a lot of finesse needed in this it takes a lot of time and i want to show this on youtube because um, if you do it right and you just take your time and you get the right tools okay there's that one on there oh it's a bit high maybe you do get second stabs at this because i don't completely put it down and you're just seeing the trickiness of this i want to be quite particular about this and uh, it's even testing my steckle deckle patience i can tell you uh doing this one this especially these ones at the back here they're small they've got to be on straight that's how they're looking this time around oh boy oh boy and um i'm just taking my time and i hope you can see the use the usefulness of a scalpel uh, I, I wasn't going to show using a scalpel but i think it's very 
uh, truthful of me to show you the way I do this. If I said I use something else, well, I'd be telling a lie. Uh, and the scalpel, I've always found to be very, very useful in applying these sort of stickers. And also, it's very good for heart surgery. You need to be a heart surgeon to pull this off. This is how tricky this one is. Well, next up for me are the seats that go inside the cockpit of Thunderbird 2. Two of these are at the front, and then there's like an engineer seat, which has got a couple, another component here, which I think it swivels around. Well, I'll try and get those into this completely awesome looking cockpit. Now the decals are in. Well, I'll try and do this rear seat first. It goes on like that. And then there's this other component. Oh boy, oh boy, I wish I had skinnier fingers. Uh, that goes there, and I think that sits in top there like that I hope that is right I think it's meant to sort of just move around in there uh, well maybe I'd be gluing them in maybe that's the wrong thing to do put in the other seats here and basically the cockpit is finished and if I throw some of the minifigures in there this really starts to come to life so hopefully I've convinced you that just taking a little bit of time with the stickers is really worthwhile well, I have put all these stackles on. It was a huge job. I think it took, well, more than an hour to get it done right. The most time is spent in here. I think it's really important to do that. But putting all these little stickers on this model has really lifted this to the next level. I really highly advise you to take your time putting them on. There are a couple underneath, but not that many. It's a little bit strange because that number two there was a sticker, yet the number two here wasn't. Uh, this up here, warning jet blast, that was already put on for you, and also that, but then other things like this was a sticker. I think the item which really came to life once the stickers were put on was the pod, and if I raise up the door here, you will see why. Oh yeah, it looks brilliant, doesn't it? Let me get Thunderbird 4 back into the pod, close the pod door up. Oh yeah, and get Thunderbird 2 back with the pot again, and what I'll do is I'll put batteries into this beautiful model, and we'll take a good look at all the features that it has. Well, on YouTube, I'm famous for these sort of shots, and I think the battery compartment is open. Well, I just got interrupted by this giant cockroach. It's one of these Chernobyl monsters. You know, once the reactor blew up the Chernobyl, giant cockroaches went all over the world. This is one of them. Look at that thing there, and I captured this one by rolling up some tape backwards on itself so the sticky side is out, and just dabbed it on its back when it was running on the ground, and was able to pick it up. And this thing, well, let's just say, it won't be on the planet for much longer. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, I'm going to put some rust inhibiting spray just in the battery compartment here, because uh, this will be my son's Thunderbird, and I want it to hopefully last with the batteries leak. When I put the batteries in, I cover up the brand name because I don't do ads for mega wealthy battery companies. Uh, although what I have learnt is the good brand batteries are, are better value, if that makes any sense. Are go. That's what we want to hear. Coming in and put this back on, I think it's a bit of a chatterbox toy. It just called for Thunderbird 4. Well, I'll turn this craft over, it keeps calling out for Thunderbird 4. I've got to read the edge of the box to understand the sound interactivity, but there is a button here, I think. Thunderbirds are go. Oh, they certainly are. On the edge of Thunderbird 2's box is a very important read about sound interactivity found here. Well, it says place Thunderbird 4 in the drop down central pod and load the pod back into Thunderbird 2. Well, I've done that. Press this button here to get them talking together and start your mission. Oh, I guess they were taking off. It then says to release the pod from Thunderbird 2 to hear Thunderbird 4 launch. And the pod release button is up here. Let's do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's nice, it's nice. So I better launch Thunderbird 4. It's actually latched in there, and to release Thunderbird 4, there's uh, leaves on the side here, and if I go like this. Come in, over. Whoa, Thunderbird 4 has taken off, literally. So the pod is empty, and apparently there's intelligent technology that lets Thunderbird 2 know that Thunderbird 4 has been launched. But I'm not getting any more peeps out of this thing. Yes. Maybe I need to do the whole launch sequence again. I'll just show you Thunderbird 4 does latch into here. I think that's important to show. And it latches in like that. And it's a double-handed thing to get Thunderbird 4 to pop out. And when I say pop out, it flies out. Oh yeah! 
Oh, okay. When the empty pod is docked inside Thunderbird 2, I've got to get the pod back inside Thunderbird 2 for it to talk. Okay, well, I'll close the pod up. Oh, yeah, I love doing that. <laughs> and I will uh, land Thunderbird 2 and unite it back with its pod. Love doing that as well. Oh, yeah, they are now talking, I hope. Okay. Come on, keep doing it for me, guys. Be Thunderbirdy for me. Thunderbird 2, this is Thunderbird 4. Yes, yes, come on, talk, talk, talk. I can hear you. I can hear you, Thunderbird 2. Talk to me. Do I press a button or not? Thunderbirds are go. Yeah, we're getting all of that, aren't we? Talk to me. Wake up, Thunderbird 2. Maybe if I fly around, ooh, ooh, we'll get something happening. Thunderbird 4, come in. Over. I'm trying to talk to you, Thunderbird 2. I'm here. I'm right in front of you. Can you see me? Yeah, hello. I'm flying around. Come on. Talk, 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 talk. Maybe we're going to move Thunderbird 2. Uh, maybe I'll work this out if, uh, if I play for a lot longer. Talk to me, guys. There was this slip of paper in the box, and it, it really just details uh, the ins and outs of Thunderbird 4, and I think it starts to reveal how things start to work. For the moment, I've popped Thunderbird 4 back into the pod, and on the back here, uh, there's a knob here, and there is this button here, which is when Thunderbird 4 is in, it's actually pushed out. If I la launch Thunderbird 4 uh, by doing that, that button goes in. Now, these are very important because these talk back to Thunderbird 2. So this is the area where the pod normally is, and it looks like the back of the pod interacts with areas up here. Well, okay, the clever technology, I think, is just these two buttons in different sequences. Uh, this longer button here is basically pod engage, pod disengage. Pod disengage. Pod disengage. If I put the pod in with Thunderbird 4 in, it'll affect both buttons. You'll hear this. Docking complete. Thunderbird 4 secured. Okay, so if you go to launch Thunderbird 4, of course, you release it. Both buttons will be released. Thunderbird 4 is go. Okay, so, and then if you put the pod back in without Thunderbird 4, you'll only affect this button. Pods engage. And sooner or later, you'll hear a call out from Thunderbird 4. Thunderbird 2, this is Thunderbird 4. There it is. I don't think I've heard this one here yet. Probably because I'm doing a review and not playing, I'm throwing the whole logic of the sound system out. I dare say, with some proper play, as if you're doing a rescue, you might get everything to work. Docking complete. Thunderbird 4 secured. So I dare say, if you've got the new Thunderbird, you can tell me more about the sounds and how you got them to work. Uh, one nice aspect to the way this one works is there are no sort of buttons that are showing on the exterior design of the craft. It's all sort of hidden away. There's a secret button there. If you go look at the Matchbox Thunderbird, it had these three buttons here. Uh, that was... Thunderbird 2, ready for lift off. Okay, then Gordon talks with this button. And this one was the engine sound, I believe. Yeah, so in a sense, you know, far simpler times, buttons exposed, but hey, did we complain about it at the time? And while I have my classic Matchbox Thunderbird 2 out, it might be very prudent to lay it on top of the new Thunderbird 2. And what is very nice to see is essentially those two Thunderbirds are the same size. It's just a, sh a tiny bit shorter than the new one. But yes, I would class it as a super-sized Thunderbird. And considering the amount of downsizing that we see going on in the toy aisle and everywhere else, it's nice to see they've kept this nice and big. While looking down directly on top, we start to see uh, some of the changes that have gone on between the classic Thunderbird 2 and our new styled one. Thunderbird 2 from the classic series, it's very rounded, it's very organic, it's like a giant capsicum, really, agree on that, it's like an airfoil as well. And in a sense, what I think they've done to get Thunderbird 2 to the new series, which is very block, uh, I'm almost going to say Minecrafty, it's been squared off. It's almost like they've got the classic and they've built it with a bat to give it a new shape. And maybe I can do an example of it via this Play-Doh. If I built that enough times, I will get the new Thunderbird shape, I hope. It's taken a fair bit of belting and a fair bit of doing that to the sides, but I believe I've got there. And there is the new Thunderbird shape, sort of all 
been squared off, hasn't it? And that sort of looks like that one there. So there you go, I've finally got a toy cricket bat onto one of my videos. I couldn't have done that transformation with rubber chickens. Rubber chickens are useless with that. They land pretty well, don't they? In fact, if I painted that rubber chicken green, it would look like the classic Thunderbird 2. Well, apart from the flattening out of the design, it looks like the wings on the new Thunderbird 2 are set further back. Also, the distance between the engines is greater on this one versus the classic version. On the classic Thunderbird, the wings were rigid. On our new Thunderbird, of course, the wings fold up. It actually leads us to a bit of trivia in relation to the pod selection sequence on the classic Thunderbird series. In the pod selection scene, a row of pods would crawl along until the one for the mission was selected and Thunderbird 2 would lower down on top of it. Oh, so this picture paints the story here, doesn't it? There's the row of pods. Okay, it looks like we've selected pod 5. Virgil would flick a switch. There'd be a cutaway shot of Virgil doing that. And when you came back to this scene, all of a sudden the pods would mysteriously have a giant gap here to allow Thunderbird 2's wings to go down onto the pod. And that was a Thunderbird's mystery. So who knows, that little bit of Thunderbird's trivia that I think most hardcore fans would know about explains why the new Thunderbird model has these fold-up wings because if the classic series had the fold-up wings that strange anomaly that happened in pod selection would never have occurred okay let me talk about the things that i like and don't like about this thunderbird 2 first off the things i don't like i don't like the fact we've got just black windows because my other classic toys have got lovely see-through clear plastic windows the seats in the cockpit, I want to glue these in because as I was doing the review, these kept falling around and this one here, the floating one, this piece here keeps falling off. I really don't know why it's there. The fold up wings on this model I think is going to be the trouble in the future uh, and I'll show you why but the legs I got to make work but it was only after a lot of study of what was not working on them and even I got to play with them a bit now but I feel this wing design here is a fail and what I'm noticing and I've only played with this for a little bit is I'm getting some plastic fatigue there it's that white mark that you can see starting there that's going to get worse and worse until it breaks the gear mechanism used for doing the legs I think is going to be the weak link as well in the design it's very different to the simplicity of the spring-loaded legs from the previous toys on the classic series but I don't know I've got my hesitations about that system there I dare say, only time will tell. Okay, the thing I didn't like was the sticker sheet, decals, decals. There were so many of them, you know, you could say, well, hey, that made the model. But boy, did it take a lot of time to put on, particularly the ones up in the cockpit here. Um, my advice would be, I mean, you could probably play with this and it would look fine without all the stickers. Uh, if you put them on wrong and crooked and everything, it's going to make this look like rubbish, okay? Uh, it's weird because it's not a cheap toy in a sense uh, The toy factory had done some of the detailing for you like the big two here and t2 was done there yet No step on the wing there wasn't put on uh, This was on there warning jet blast that two there international rescue was done in factory uh, yet caution no step here was a sticker So it, I couldn't really work out why things were done partially in factory and then why you were lumbered with this giant steckle sheet But it was something that I wasn't that happy about well, there are the minifigures, Virgil and Gordon. I've got them up against a Lego minifigure there. I'll show you why I'm not happy with these. Well, I've just added in there some minifigures from my classic Thunderbirds toys, and it's possibly best for a picture to tell a thousand words into why I'm not that keen on these new minifigures. But hey, maybe I'm seeing it all wrong. Uh, maybe I'm just being a very hard mark here, but uh, I do prefer the classic minifigures versus the new ones. That is the classic... Looks cool, doesn't he? Uh, and this is the new one. And what I've noticed is that he has a tendency to just fall apart. Classic doesn't do that. They're, they're similar in design in a sense in the way they articulate. But um, the way this one has been built, the new one, um, put it this way, I wouldn't be leaving it round where there are small children. Although I've put his legs on back the front there. It's also a bit strange how long the legs are. Is it normal for legs to be that long versus the, the torso? Yeah, the arms do do move. Okay, uh, no face details and legs that, well for me, just pop off. 
Anyway, when you can't see me, I'll be playing like this. Oh yeah. Okay, let's swing it the other way and talk about the things that I like about this beautiful Thunderbird 2 and Thunderbird 4. Well, like I said before, Thunderbird 4 has gained the most, I think, in this redesign for the fact that we can put Gordon in there and have a bit of a play is nice as well. I was going to call these little coffins a fail, but hey, maybe someone thinks it's the best idea. They've utilised areas on this toy that has not been done before, and for the fact that back opens up as a rescue zone is nice as well. Uh, and Thunderbird 4 really has come up looking bright and shiny and almost so fresh and new. It's not funny. Yeah, I do like the fact that it goes into the pod, locks in there, okay, and can be shot out, and the pod, I think, is excellent as well. A feature I do like is the sounds this toy makes, especially when you're doing the pod. Docking complete. Thunderbird 4 secured. I do like the efforts that have gone to to make Thunderbird 2's cockpit. It's quite lavish looking. Uh, it's exciting. It's also a lot of work to put all those stickers on. On the top of the cockpit, there is a porthole here. I quite like that feature there. On the front of Thunderbird 2, uh, there are these here. Now, I really don't know what these are, but I don't think they're going to break off because they're nice and soft. Now, when I first saw those, I thought they were a fail until I gave them a good play. Uh, if you can tell me what they are, I'd love to know. On the new design of Thunderbird 2, it has got four adjustable vertical takeoff and landing thrusters. It's a nice little edge to have on this toy and gives it that little bit of extra playability. And for horizontal flight mode, these can be swiveled around and totally hidden away. The wheels I've used on the pod are good, and they roll Thunderbird 2 along just as it should be. And rolling along is very important when you're recreating the takeoff sequence for Thunderbird 2. I do like they have hidden the activity buttons on this toy yeah, that is different to the classic toys that I've got, and I can do a single-handed pod release if I grab the back here, press that button there. Here we go. Oh yeah. I just like flying this beast around actually, it is so awesome looking, I'm just going to come down and grab the pot again. Docking complete. But I think the greatest aspect to this toy is just the way it looks. It's got enough of the original Thunderbirds DNA to say it's very cool. I'm the harshest critic when it comes to Thunderbirds and I'm giving this the tick of approval. This craft looks good with the pod down, it looks good with the pod up. Thunderbird 4 looks excellent, it's got all the little bits of detail that screams Thunderbirds and if any small boy has received this as a toy, he is going to be very happy. He is going to have a lot of fun, he's going to have a lot of Thunderbirds adventures. I feel the positives uh, outweigh the negatives, uh, it's really nice to see this brand back on the shelves and I can see that this toy is selling like hotcakes. Went back to the store and I've taken video of basically empty pegs. And I'm not surprised because this is a very popular brand and it's also a brand that is rarely ever seen in the toy stores. And in the world where everything old is new again, uh, this rebranding of Thunderbirds looks very good. And I think this is far more impressive than a rehashed X-Wing fighter or TIE fighter from Star Wars. But hey, I'm a Thunderbirds tragic and I'm also one of the harshest critics. And for me to give this the thumbs up is saying a lot. And I'm not being paid to say that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry it's been a very long video because I wanted to give this toy the proper looking over it deserves. As always, thanks for watching and bye for now. I'm just doing the thumbnail and I put Thunderbird 4 back inside and all of a sudden it's making all these different sounds. Thunderbird 4, come in. Over. Thunderbird 2, this is Thunderbird 4. Why wasn't it doing this before? FAB, Virgil. Systems check complete. Docking clamp released. We are go for launch. Uh-huh. FAB, Thunderbird 4. Stand by for launch, Thunderbird 4. FAB, Virgil. Okay, who's been watching up to the end of the video? Let's see who answers this question. Can you tell me in this new Thunderbirds Ago series, what is CGI and what is model? Now, I had to look very, very carefully to understand one from the other, and even then, I sort of had to phone a friend I had a bit of a dis discussion on a video on YouTube about this, on another person's channel, can you tell me what's model and what is CGI? I can tell you this, that the model work in the new series of Thunderbirds is actually quite amazing, well done to the model makers. And even the CGI work is very, very fancy, and that is something I don't say very often. 
My biggest gripe is Grandma, and I've got to ask the question, where is Jeff Tracy?